Hey everybody, welcome to another lesson of learning Japanese. Today we're testing out a new part of the curriculum and that is going to be anime vocabulary. What we're going to do is we're basically just going to go through various episodes of various anime and we're going to be dissecting some of the vocabulary so we can expand our own vocabulary of the Japanese language and learn some new words, learn some new phrases, and get a feel of what scenarios and situations they're used in. So without further ado, the episode that we're going to be looking at today is the ninth episode of Haikyuu Season 2 and this episode is titled Versus Kasa and Kasa is going to mean umbrella. Okay so basically what we have for this video is going to be a vocabulary list of 10 different vocabulary terms and we're gonna have example sentences for each one of them and the example sentences are going to be the sentences that were uttered in the actual episode. And here in the beginning uh, we'll show all 10 of them just in case you know all of them already by any chance and you don't have to uh, watch this video then. But for those who do not know the words and want to learn them then continuing is advised I suppose. So now let's move into our first word. So for our first vocabulary term we have the word haike and this is going to translate to just basically deer and this this is going to be the deer that you're going to be using in letters, not the animal deer. So this is basically the Japanese equivalent of saying dear sir or dear madam or dear Mr. Blank or dear Mrs. Blank or dear Miss Blank or dear so and so, dear to whom it may concern. Basically the equivalent of that. And when this Japanese word is used in letters, it is usually followed in the end of the letter with another kind of parting phrase. And that phrase is going to be keigu. And this is going to translate to basically best regards or more commonly what the English language uses is sincerely blank, sincerely yours basically. So when is this vocabulary word haike used in haiku? It's actually used in the very first, in the very beginning. It's the first word uttered by Yachi when she's doing her kind of internal monologue and she's penning a letter to her mom to tell her what's going on at the training camp that she's helping out at. Haike, okaasan sama. So our example sentence for this vocabulary word is haike okaasan sama. So if we break down this little phrase bit by bit, first up we just have haike, like I said, that's going to mean dear. And then we have okaasan sama and that's just going to be mom. And so that little phrase right there is just going to translate to dear mom and it's supposed to act as the introduction to a letter that's being written to her mom. Pretty simple. Haike, for our next vocabulary term, we have the word suzushi. And this is going to translate to cool or refreshing, and it's mostly going to refer to weather. So for our example sentence right there, we have Tokyo wa suzushi basho toiedo tohoku yori atsui desu. Tokyo wa suzushi basho toiedo tohoku yori atsui desu. And so what this line is going to translate to is Tokyo has cool weather, but it's hotter than the Tohoku region. Let's break down this sentence bit by bit. First up, we just have Tokyo. That's going to be Tokyo, the capital of Japan. We have the wall marking it as the topic of the phrase or the sentence technically. We have suzushi. That's our vocabulary word. So it's going to mean cool. So Tokyo wa suzushi is going to be Tokyo is cool. Right after suzushi, we have basho. So actually that's going to be Tokyo is a cool place. So suzushi basho is going to be cool place because basho means place. We have to iedo, and this is going to be basically to you, which means to say. But in this conjugation, toyedo is going to mean it can be said but. So, so far we have it can be said that Tokyo is a cool place but. Uh, then we have the rest of our sentence. And right there we have tohoku yori atsui desu. And tohoku is going to be a region of Japan. And so tohoku is also a place. Uh, then we have the grammar pattern yori here which is going to be used to compare things. And so since it's tohoku yori, this is going to be more than tohoku. And the thing that is more than tohoku is going to be Tokyo. And then what is it more at? Well, we find out right after yori and we have the e adjective atsui, which means hot. And then we have desu to end the sentence. So altogether, that's literally going to translate to it can be said that Tokyo is a cool place, but it's hotter than Tohoku region. And more naturally, that'll just be Tokyo has cool weather, but it's hotter than the Tohoku region. Tokyo wa suzushi basho to iedo Tohoku yori atsui desu. So that's using suzushi in a sentence. For our next vocabulary word, we have orikai shiten. Mou sugu orikai shi chiten. And what this word is going to mean is turning point or turnaround point. And for our example sentence, we simply have mosugu orikaishiten. Mosugu orikaishiten. And what this will translate to is just basically it's almost the turning point. If we break it down, it's basically just gonna consist of two parts. We have mosugu, and this is gonna translate to almost. And then we have the actual vocab word orikaishiten, which means turning point. So combine those two, and this is gonna mean almost the turning point, or more naturally, it is almost the turning point. Mosugu orikaishiten. Moving on to our next vocabulary word, we have the word shototsu. Hinata to Kageyama kun no shototsu kara. And this is going to translate to clash, 
collision, conflict, or quarrel. The example sentence that we have for it is Hinata to Kageyama-kun no shototsu kara yaku sanshukan. And what this will translate to is just It's been about three weeks since Hinata and Kageyama's fight. Let's break down the sentence bit by bit. First up we have Hinata, that's just gonna be the name of a person. We have to to mean and. We have Kageyama to be a name of another person. Then we have kun right after Kageyama, that's just gonna be an honorific. And then we have no. That's the particle that is using the noun of a noun modification here. Uh, then we have shototsu, and that's our vocabulary word, so it's gonna mean collision or conflict. So, Hinata to Kageyama kun no shototsu is going to be Hinata and Kageyama's fight, or Hinata and Kageyama's collision. Right after that, we have the particle kara to mean basically from or since. So, since their fight, and then right after that, we have yaku, and this is going to translate to basically approximately or about. And then right after that, we have kind of a numeric value, and that is sanshukan. That's going to be the word san, which means three. And then we have shu, which is going to translate to basically week. And then we have kan, which is going to be basically an amount of time. So, so sanshukan is going to translate to three weeks' time, basically. So combine that with the rest of the sentence, and we have it has been about three weeks' time since Hinata and Kageyama's fight. Hinata to Kageyama -kun no shoutotsu kara. For our next vocabulary term, we have the word waza to. And this is gonna translate to purposely or on purpose. Our example sentence is ima no waza to desu ka? And this sentence is pretty casual because it has the dot 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 and you're supposed to assume what it means in there. So what this is gonna translate to is that just now, dot dot dot, was it on purpose? So let's break down the sentence bit by bit. First up, starting the sentence is the word ima, which is going to translate to now, basically. And then we have the particle no, which is going to invoke the noun of noun modification in the sentence. But in this sentence, part of the noun of noun modification is missing. So it's basically the context that is telling you what it is. So ima no blank is just going to translate loosely to that just now. And then we fill in the rest of the sentence, and what we have is basically the vocab term waza to to mean on purpose or purposely, and then we have des to end the sentence plus the sentence ending particle ka to make it into a question. So that just now was it on purpose. Our next vocab word is actually pretty confusable with the one we just did, and it is waza. So waza without the to right after it, and what this is going to translate to is technique or move or skill or art. And the phrasing that we have used in the actual episode is hisatsu waza. Hisatsu waza! And this is going to translate to basically just special move. This is basically one word, but we can break it down into its kanji, respective kanji. So for our first part of the kanji, we have hisatsu. And the he here is going to translate to certain, basically. The satsu is going to translate to kill. And so that's going to be sure kill, basically. And then waza is going to be technique. So basically, it translates literally to a sure kill technique. Moving on to our next vocabulary word, we have saishubi. And this is going to translate to last day or final day. And the example sentence that we have from the episode is kyo ga saishubi dakara ganbaro. And this is going to translate to today is the final day, today is the last day, so let's give it our best. If we break down the sentence bit by bit, first up we have kyo, which is going to translate to today. We have the particle ga, making it as the subject. We have saishubi, that's the vocabulary word, so it means last day. So kyo ga saishubi is going to be today is the last day. Then we have dakara to be a conjunction to mean because basically or so then we have the verb gambaru in its volitional form to mean let's do that verb so let's give it our best since gambaru means to do your best basically next vocab word we have kanroku and kanroku is going to mean presence or dignity and the example sentence that it's used in in the episode is penalty o konasu sugata ni iyo na kanroku and what this line will translate to is basically they have a strange kind of dignity to them when they take their penalties this is a pretty casual sentence because it uh, drops some of the grammatical necessities in formal language but let's go through it so first up we have the word penalty then we have the o marking it as a direct object we have the verb Konasu, basically going to translate to handle. So handle the penalty. Then we have the word sugata, which is going to mean appearance. Then we have the particle ni. Then we have the not adjective iyo. And this is going to translate to strange, basically. And then it's going to be modifying the word right after it, which is our vocabulary word, which is kanroku, which is going to be presence or dignity. So a strange kind of dignity. So we combine it all together and we get a sentence that has a pretty implied subject here. And it's going to be they have a strange kind of dignity to them when they handle their penalties or when they take their penalties. 
our next vocab word, we have shomoi. And this is going to be desire or request or wish. And the example sentence that we have for this vocab word is and what this is going to translate to is just I desire the greatest toss. So let's break down this example sentence. First up we have ware, and ware is going to translate to I, and it's being used here in lieu of something like watashi or ore, because in this scenario you know, we have the person talking acting like a king, like he's royal, so he is important or something like that. Next up we have the word saiko, which is going to mean greatest basically. It's going to be used in the noun of a noun modification, so it's going to be followed by the particle no, and then we have the noun right after no, which is Tosu, which is going to be toss, like a volleyball toss. So saiko no tosu is going to be the greatest toss. And then we have the particle o marking as the direct object. Then we have shomo being used as a verbal noun, so to desire, to request. Then we have su at the end instead of suru or something like that, just because of the casualness of the sentence. Now we move on to our last vocabulary word, and that is going to be ensei, which is going to mean expedition or more specifically in this case away games. And for our example sentence we have And this is going to translate to compared to our first away games, everyone should have changed one way or another. Let's break down the sentence. First up we have the word saisho, which is going to mean beginning basically. It's going to be part of a noun of a noun modification with the actual vocabulary word that we have here, ensei. So saisho no ensei is going to be the away games of beginning, more naturally that I'll translate to first away games. We have the particle kara here and it's being used because the verb right after that we're using, which is kuraberu, which means to compare. It's going to be in its tada form, so it's going to be kurabetara. And since the tada form is going to be the hypothetical form, so far what we have is going to translate to if you compare with our first away games. Then we finish the sentence and it's going to be Nina, which is going to mean everybody. We have the word nani kashira. This is going to translate to somehow or another, or something or another, or one way or another. Then we have the verb kawaru, which means the change in its te iru form to mean has changed. So it's going to be kawateru, and this is going to be a more casual form of kawate iru. After that, to end the sentence, we have a grammar pattern being used here, and this is the hazuda grammar pattern. And what hazu expresses is that there is kind of a reason to believe that what was just stated is true. So in the somewhat natural translation, it's going to translate to should. And so we put everything together and we have, compared to our first away games, everyone should have changed one way or another. And so yeah, that's 10 vocabulary terms from Haikyuu Season 2 Episode 9 versus Kasa, inclusive of the whole sentences that they were used in basically, and yeah, hopefully um, analyzing some actual anime and getting a feel of what the characters are saying and knowing how everything works, the grammar, the vocabulary words, and the kanji was helpful. And hopefully we'll cover more episodes of the show and probably some other shows soon after unless any complications arise. And so yeah, leave any questions, comments, concerns in the comments below and, and happy haikyuuing!